So we hold a, a Holocaust remembrance ceremony on Yom HaShoah every year because it's our our mission, the museum's mission, to commemorate and educate. And so this is really our main commemorative event every year, where we invite all of the Holocaust survivors, and we have most of the ones in the Los Angeles area actually live close to the museum, so we invite them all here. Uh, and the mayor comes and a lot of other dignitaries, and we have an event so that they have at least one day where they know that the community remembers with them their loved ones. Is this more for the survivors or for who, who well, it's do you? Gonna be, it's going to be interesting to see how it transitions. Um, you know, I, I'm not one of those who say the survivors aren't going to be here. They're going to live forever. I mean, you saw Ava Brettler, she's she's still in her 70s and she's going to have another 30 years with us. So I'm not not so worried about it yet. But there will be a time when when the commemoration will be the next generation. We'll see if it takes on a different tone. But for the past uh, you know decades, it's been a survivor-driven event, and uh, and I think that's right that it that it should be. It's about the survivors, and I, I like to come in because my family there aren't survivors; they're just victims and escapees. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to remind them what the survivors already know, but a lot of people don't think about. It's not about the survivors. The Holocaust is about the people who didn't survive, mm -hmm. and really this ceremony is about those that they left behind. And so I I usually try to include that in my speech. I like that you made the distinction between survivors and escapees. Would, would you uh, expound on that a little, please? Well, my, you know, there's sort of a hierarchy even among survivors where they say you were in this camp and that camp. Do you have a tattoo? Do you not? Right? The the ones in Auschwitz. Um, my grandparents were lucky. They escaped. My father's parents were in Berlin in 1933, and they left on a midnight train in May of 33, when uh, you know already things were were getting difficult. But it was still a long way off from what would uh, would come later. Uh, my mother's parents were in Austria, and they actually bought tickets to leave on November 10th, 1938. November 9th, that evening, was Kristallnacht, the infamous Kristallnacht, where people, so they were, my grandfather had to be hidden in the washroom uh, all night, and in the morning they went and made their way to the train station and got on a train, and because they had tickets already with tourists and other people, they weren't taken off the train, but my grandmother said from other compartments where they had people just without reserved seats, they, the Jews were dragged off the train and not allowed to, to go anywhere. So my, my family was very lucky. They escaped. Uh, I never grew up considering them survivors like people like Ava Brettler who spoke today and was in Robin's book and Bergen-Belsen and places like that. Uh, they had a different experience. On the other hand, they shared some of the experience because they witnessed the, the Nazis coming to power. They were under the Nazis for a certain amount of time and they left their loved ones, their parents, their siblings. Uh, on both sides, uh, everybody lost very close family members. So, so they had that same sense of loss, even though they themselves, I think, wouldn't wouldn't have considered themselves survivors of the Holocaust.